quick scope boy. I, I'm Mr. Zapone, and I am the greatest zombies player of all time. Truth. Hashtag. Uh, peanut butter and jealous. You. Alright, so today we're going to look at volume displacement. And that's using water to measure the volume or the amount of physical space something takes up when it is irregularly shaped. If we had a sphere, a solid sphere, like a bowling ball or a golf ball, which probably isn't solid all the way through, it's not. But uh, if we had a cube or a sphere, we can use simple formulas to calculate their volume. For any cube, it's length times width times height. For a sphere, it's four-thirds pi r cubed. So if we have regularly shaped geometric objects, we can use formulas to calculate their volume. But sometimes we have objects that, well, are shaped very irregularly. They are not uniform, or they're not perfect spheres or squares, or pyramids or things of that nature, or cylinders. So we have to have a different method to determine the amount of physical space they take up, because the formula won't work. And we all know that when you step into a bathtub, the level of the water rises up. And if you jump into a full bathtub, the water will overflow and mom and dad will not be happy. Um, so we can use volume or water displacement to measure the volume of irregular objects. And there's some simple rules here, or not rules, but facts. Water is generally incompressible. If you shove your fist into a bucket of water, the water molecules do not compress together. They generally rise up around your arm hand. So that actually allows us to use water displacement to measure volume. Um, the important key is here is that one milliliter equals one centimeter cubed. Hopefully we know that a centimeter cube is a measure of volume. When we're dealing with density, we work in terms of grams per centimeter cubed. When we're measuring things with a graduated cylinder, that long thin column with all the markings on it, those are milliliters. And every milliliter is equal to a centimeter cubed. So if you had 27 milliliters of water, that's the same thing as saying you have 27 centimeters cubed of water. On water displacement, it's useful for measuring the volume of irregularly shaped objects. And anytime you put an object in water, it's going to displace the same volume of water that the object itself has. So if you put an object in there that's, say, 42 centimeters cubed, um, it should displace 42 milliliters of water, or 42 centimeters cubed of water. So that's a cool uh, rule of thumb. Allows us to do some cool things. So if we had a very large screw and we dropped it into a graduated cylinder that was initially filled up to 60 milliliters. Well, what's going to happen to the level of the wallet? Well, of course, it's going to rise up as the solid, dense object falls to the bottom. And let's say it rose up from 60 to 80 milliliters. This is a very big screw. Um, so we started here. The water went up to here when we dropped the screw in. What is the volume of the screw? Well, to do that, um, the, same, the screw has the same volume as the amount of water it's going to displace. So we see that this went from 60 to 80, that's 20 milliliters. That means the screw is 20 milliliters or 20 centimeters cubed because a milliliter equals a centimeter cubed. So this screw has a volume of 20 centimeters cubed. So the cool thing is we can just drop things in water and figure out how big they are if we have a big enough container with markings on the side. Uh, one more example, if you place a large screw in a graduated cylinder, uh, let's say that it initially started at 57.4 milliliters, that was the marking of it, and when you drop the screw in, the water level rises up to 81.6. What is the volume of the screw? Well, in order to get a volume, we just have to figure out how much the water level rose up. And to do that, we just get a difference between these two numbers. We take 81.6 minus 57.4, and we get a result of 24.2. All you're doing is getting a difference between the final and the initial position. In the other case, it was easier because it went from 60 to 80. But this one is the same thing. You just take the final point subtracted by the initial point, and this is the volume of the object, whatever level the water rose up by. So volume displacement is relatively straightforward.
And now we're going to do a couple of density problems involving volume displacement. Uh, 28.5 gram of iron shot. So let's say you had a piece of iron. Kind of like a BB, a big BB of iron. Um, you're dropping it into a graduated cylinder. The water level is going to rise. It started at 45.50 milliliters. Ah. When you drop the iron in, the water level rises up to 49.10 milliliters. And from this information, they ask us to calculate the density of iron. Well, hopefully we realize the density of any object equals its mass divided by its volume. And that's the Greek letter rho, the symbol for density. Uh, the mass is relatively straightforward. They tell us that right in the beginning. They say it is a 28.5 gram iron shot. And gram is a measure of mass, so we have 28.5 grams. Divided by the volume, what's the volume? Well, they don't tell us the volume directly in the problem. All they tell us is that when you drop it in the water, the water started at 45.5, it went up to 49.1. Um, but we can use this to figure out the volume. The difference here is the volume of the object using water displacement. So you take 49.10 or 49.1 minus 45.5. And that should equal 3.6 milliliters. And a milliliter is the same thing as a centimeter cubed. So we can call that 3.6 centimeters cubed. Sorry, I'm letting my cat out. So in order to calculate the density, we simply take this top number divided by the bottom number, 28.5 in the calculator, divided by 3.6. And yes, I cheated, so don't do that on the test. Bad. So it is 7.92 grams per centimeter cube. So the mass was given to you. We calculate the volume from the amount of water it displaced. And don't forget your units, grams per cm cubed. Last problem, an irregularly shaped stone was lowered into a graduated cylinder holding a volume of water equal to 12 milliliters. So they're telling us that the water here is at 12 milliliters. First thing they're telling us. And when you drop the stone in, the water rose or rises to 17 milliliters. So the water level goes up to 17 milliliters. And hopefully by now you realize this is the volume of the stone, the amount that the water goes up by. And what is 17 minus 12? Well, that's a little simpler than the last problem. That's equal to 5 milliliters. Or, since a milliliter and a centimeter cubed may be used interchangeably, we can call that 5 centimeters cubed. And they tell us the stone has a mass of 25 grams, and they ask us to calculate its density. And density Again, equals mass divided by volume. Mass is 25 grams. And the volume in this case, it went from 12 to 17 milliliters and went up 5 milliliters. The volume is 5 centimeters cubed. And this one gets even easier to calculate. 25 over 5 equals 5 grams per centimeter cubed. So that's how we use volume displacement to, or water displacement to determine the volume of irregularly shaped objects and how to calculate density, assuming we know the mass of the object as well. Uh, this is Mr. Spong.